All right, so a lot of people do bike checks in a lot of different ways. I'm gonna try to give you the actual details about what I did on my bike and why I did them. And we'll go head to toe on the bike from the top to the bottom. So let's kick it off at the top with the saddle and the grips. So this saddle is actually made by Specialized. It's a Specialized Phenom and it's actually got tie rails, but I actually painted those black. I just like the black look. This saddle is awesome. I love it. It's uh, thinly padded, not too thin. Um, and then in the back here, it's got uh, some bolt holes and you can put in different accessories like um, they have a spot that can hold your tools and a bunch of different stuff. So really cool. Has a short nose for mountain biking. That way it doesn't get stuck um, when you're going fore and aft, which is a really good idea too. Um, the seat post. This was a hard decision for me, but I put on a RockShox Reverb and I went for the 170, the full drop. Uh, this is the new B1 with the improved seals and it certainly is much better. Uh, the reason I put a dropper on this bike was because I felt like it was so capable in every way of going downhill that I was putting myself in situations that it's kind of getting a little scary at times. So um, having the dropper was something that I found or I thought was going to be beneficial and turned out to totally be beneficial. Uh, my times on different loops have gone down dramatically and sure it added about, I don't know, I think about 300 grams to the bike, so just under a pound. but it's worth it. Uh, I can descend so much better with it. So 170 millimeter drop internal routing and I have it coming down here with some cable guides by Jaguar that you actually stick onto your frame to keep it nice and organized. And then it runs externally along the side of the frame here. Uh, moving to the front here, I have grips, ESI racer's edge. The chunkies are a little too big for my hands, but the racer's edge are awesome. And these are some prototypes actually from ESI that have a different shape to them. They're not the shape where it's narrow, where you're thumb and forefinger meet and then wider. It's actually straight across and there's no shape to them. So they're like perfectly round. I actually like them a lot. They don't have that flat spot in them. So I love those. And then I have the NV Sweet Bar. This bar came at 760 millimeters wide. I cut it down to 740 millimeters wide. I have about a 39 inch chest um, or I should say a 39 inch suit jacket size. And that's what feels about right for me. I do like a wider bar. I'm used to motocross. We ride 800 plus, um, but not too wide in this case. Uh, I got the flat bar because I wanted to keep the front end as low as possible for cross country racing to keep my climbing stance still on point. And it does that. And with that dropper post, I don't have to worry about having too low of a front end because I can get down as low as I need. Uh, as far as the stem, I have the Envy Road stem, and that was because I specifically wanted to go to the length that I have, which I believe is an 80 millimeter stem, and or 90 millimeter stem, forgive me. That just gives me the reach, the exact reach that I wanted from saddle to bars. Uh, it's an extremely stiff stem, and this and their bars, all the stuff that Envy makes, it's incredible. I don't get anything from free for free from Envy, um, even discounted. I pay full pop for it, but it's really good stuff. Uh, K-Edge mount I have on the front here for my Garmin and then I have an attachment below where I can put a GoPro or a light. For example, I have jet lights and they mount directly to a GoPro mount. So that's nice and easy. Um, in addition to that, I use SRAM guide brakes, then SRAM shifters. So that makes it so that everything mounts up perfectly. I only have two clamps on my bars. That's it. Really handy system. So going down to the frame, I'm 5'11", roughly. I have a 33 inch inseam, so pretty long legs. And I am right in between a medium and a large, and I chose the medium. I like that because a smaller chassis makes me feel like I can control the bike a little more. And in this case, I, I just personally preferred the feel of it. So this is a size medium frame. It comes with a Fox DPS shock, which is a killer shock, really good. But in this case, I wanted to go full rock shocks. Rock shocks tend to have a more firm feel, and it works out perfectly for me. I like that feel for cross country racing, but for more downhill enduro stuff, I'd probably end up going Fox because I like the plushness that it has. So this is a RockShox Monarch XX, and this runs right here with more of those Jaguar stick-on uh, cable guides. Around to the front, up to this lockout right here. Now I push this plunger and it locks out my fork and it locks out my shock all in one. I push one plunger and all of, everything's locked out and the bike is like rigid. I can adjust it right here. There's a little coupler and I can twist that to adjust how much the front end locks out. And I actually have the front end pretty soft and it locks out relatively speaking uh, because I still like to have some traction there. I also went with a RockShox RS1 fork on here. Uh, it's incredible. Don't believe anything that people say about it not being or twisty in the front. 
If you stand here and twist it, you might get a little bit, but when you're riding on the bike, you don't feel it at all. It's incredibly stiff and the, the damping is awesome. The oil is constantly resting there. So it doesn't have to get pushed up into the valving and then travel through the valving to work. The oil is already there. So you get this initial plushness. that's just awesome with that fork. Um, really love it. And I got the 120 millimeter fork and I believe there's the 45 millimeter offset. Look down in the descriptions below. I can't remember the exact offset, but I'll put it down there. And I got the offset that Yeti recommended themselves. Um, awesome fork. I don't recommend going to a 100 millimeter for cross country racing. With the 120 millimeter, my stack height is still on par with um, like the hardtail that I had from previous years, which was a specialized stump jumper hardtail. This is actually still lower with uh, 20 millimeters extra suspension. So no reason. Uh, it's an incredible fork on there. Um, moving on to the different odds and ends that I have on the frame. I constantly have cable guides that I keep on here. My cables have to be tidy. Uh, in addition to that, I routed the rear brake through the frame here. Since I was just going with a one by, I don't have a front derailleur. So I routed my rear brake through here, my shifter through the other port, and then I route my dropper post cable, like I said, through the outside. Uh, bottle cage is a Z cage from Specialized. And the reason for that is because once again, it's a nice side load cage. There's not a lot of room. These cages are awesome. They don't break and they hold your bottles really well. Easy to get in and out of, solid stuff. Now, even though it may not look like it, I actually have another bottle cage on this bike and that's on the underside of the frame. It doesn't have room to hold two water bottle cages inside the front triangle. So it has bosses for that underneath the down tube. The issue is it would look weird to just have a cage hanging down there. So I have a fabric water bottle and all it has are pretty much little plastic nubs that stick off of that. And you're able to actually slide the bottle onto that. The bottle has slots. Um, the next thing, the stickers that you might see on here, uh, these are from a company called Stickered, S-T-I-K-R-D. And I worked with them to get the stickers on the wheels, on the fork, and on the shock. Uh, it's all custom stuff that, that we designed together. So um, SRAM Guide RSC brakes, they're killer brakes. Uh, I like them personally. Shimano's are really good too. Um, but I like the more, I guess, the, the modulation that you can feel. Uh, I think that it feels great. SRAM X01 shifter. Um, that's all mounted up to one single thing, like I said here. This is my dropper post remote on this side. So I have my two remotes, just one shifter, my two brake levers. I adjust my brake levers all the way out and I adjust them so that I move them laterally, perhaps you can see here, so that my finger is just at the edge. That way I get the most leverage and the most control and you only brake with one finger. You don't need to have it way in here so you can brake with two or three or even four, heavens no. Just one finger, that's all you need. Uh, the next and on a pro tip on this when you bleed the brakes adjust them so that uh, Adjust them so that let me think about this when you bleed them uh, They are all the way in uh, so you can move them in quite a lot and then after that adjust them back out and you'll get I Guess a, a more instant feel with it. So that'll help if got that wrong. I'll correct that in the description below as well uh, Moving on to the tires. I have Maxxis Ardent Race 29 by 2.2s they measure right about on point there. Um, they're, they're awesome tires. Everyone usually goes with the Icon. I prefer the Ardent Race. It feels like it rolls the same, if not faster. It brakes way better. And it also has way more control on the sides when you're leaning it over. Um, I really do prefer it in every way. And I don't feel like it slows me down in any situation. It has more knobs than the normal Ardent. And it also gets rid of that massive space in the Ardent in between the top, uh, the center knobs, and then the side. So you don't have that weird drift zone. So really killer tire for the front and rear. And that's what I have on here. Then I have MVM50. So the 5050 wheels on there, they are awesome wheels. I think they weigh like 1,366 grams, something super light like that, but they are so stiff. It's incredible. Um, zero flex out of them. I have a SRAM predictive steering front hub and a DT Swiss 240S rear hub. And that rear hub has the 56.2 star ratchets in there. You can get 1836. Um, or 54, forgive me. And you can see in a video that I have where I compare the sounds, I'll have a link to that below in the description as well. But having the 54 tooth gives you more points of engagement, a lot of them, and it gives your bike a nice tight feel, which I really like on it. Uh, down from there, I have a SRAM X01 cassette. I measured the X01 versus the XX1 cassette, and this was actually like three grams lighter. So weight difference, not there, and it's exactly the same construction, it's just different color. 
So X01 cassette, it's black, which means it's good. I have an X01 rear derailleur. Uh, I have my cable routing down here with some micro zip ties. It's external through the chainstay. Uh, makes it easy. I honestly prefer it, even though it doesn't look as good as internal. Uh, you have an oval ring right here from Absolute Black, narrow wide. To be honest, I don't know how much better it is than a standard ring, but I will say this, pedal bob on this bike is non-existent, and that's with the shock wide open, not locked out, and I get really good traction. My theory is that on mountain biking with an oval ring, it would smooth out the torque delivery to the rear wheel, and that would give you more consistent traction. Could be wrong on that, but that's what I think. I don't buy into the physiological benefits of oval rings at all, but in the technical side of things, I, I do think that that would be an advantage. I have Xpedo um, uh, M-Force TIE 8 pedals. They're the lightest pedals you can get besides the Crank Brothers titanium uh, egg beaters, but you get normal SPD feel, so much more of a solid feeling platform. You can adjust how difficult it is to uh, clip out or clip in really good pedals and they're super durable don't believe anybody that says they aren't i've slammed them on rocks and they are totally fine um let's see and then going from there i guess or actually going back up to the frame my whole frame is covered in invisa frame it's a brand that you can find a link to that or a link in the description below as well and they actually make templates for your bike and you just apply the decals on the whole thing it's really cool um, it protects the whole bike Really easy to do, and uh, I'm actually going to be putting up a video on how exactly to install that um, so that you don't have any issues. So uh, with this fork, um, I run this fork at about 97 PSI, and that's pretty good for me. Uh, I don't, and then I have the rebound set so that it's as fast as it can possibly go. So the lowest amount of rebound dampening or damping possible. The reason for that on this fork is that I'm really just trying to match the shock. It's a strange, t the tune of the shock feels great for this bike, but it's almost like the, it's something's weird with the rebound because I'm all the way out on this. So the fork is as quick as possible. And with this shock, um, I'm turned, I think three clicks out from as slow as you can go. So that makes the bike balanced, but that gives you an idea of where I'm at there. And then I'm at 145 PSI in the rear shock. I weigh about 145 pounds. So that should give you an idea of where I'm at there. With the tires, I run these tires at 21 PSI in the front and 24 PSI in the rear. And that I haven't had any issues with any type of burping or anything else like that. It's solid. Down here, you can see I have a stages power meter. And the stages power meter is something that I wouldn't ride without. Well, not specifically stages, it's a killer power meter. It's very good and it's cheap. Those are the cool parts about it and it's consistent, but just a power meter in general. Corks are really good too. Um, yeah, I wouldn't ride without a power meter if at all possible because I'm a data nerd and I like to get that stuff. So that covers it. Uh, oh, one more detail. This is a slam that stem uh, top cap with a Cane Creek 4044, I believe headset. <clears throat> Gave me a little too much stack and I wanted to get it as low as I could. So look it up, slam that stem. I'll actually have the link below on that one as well. And you can pick up this headset cover that is extremely low profile. So then you have zero stack up in the front. Uh, that's the bike. It's awesome. It's really good. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, for XC racing, it's awesome. All the weight on this bike, it's uh, with the dropper post, it is 22.5 pounds. That's really good. I had it down below 21 at one point, but I added a few different things and it, and it brought it up. I don't notice the weight penalty and honestly, it's way more capable with this dropper. I really do love it. <clears throat> so uh, I find that it's perfect for XC. You can ride it like a hardtail when you lock it out, but it also rides like a bike that's way bigger than it in terms of travel and geometry if you get into nasty stuff. Uh, probably only one or two times I found it where it's felt like you know out of its element or outpaced by the terrain. Uh, one time in Moab, um, which the majority, 99% of Moab was just fine, uh, but I just got into some tricky spots where I probably shouldn't be. And then in some downhill trails, or on some downhill trails up here in Tahoe, I found myself into spots where it's like waterfall drops of consecutive three to five feet. <clears throat> and that gets pretty tough. Um, but just the same, it handles it. Uh, really good bike, super stiff, uh, really playful and fun, but at the same time, it's, it's really efficient. So absolutely love this bike. Uh, I've turned down offers to ride for companies for free, uh, get, or get their bikes for free to ride this bike and I paid for this bike. Um, I'm a Yeti ambassador, but I paid for this bike. So uh, yeah, absolutely love it.
check it out. Uh, check out all the brands in the description below. And if you have any questions about the bike or how it handles or how I built something up, if I missed something, just let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Thanks.